All right, what's going on guys? In this video, we're going to talk about what a Python compiler is, um, the Python virtual machine slash interpreter, and what they do, what a Python compiler and what a Python virtual machine slash interpreter does. All right, so let's just get started. Compilers, so what are compilers? Compilers are a, a program that turn one language into another language. So usually it's uh, turning a high-level language into a low-level language. All right. So what are high-level languages? Uh, high-level languages are languages like Python, C, uh, JavaScript, are languages that we use to create software and scripts. So these are all the popular languages that you hear about. Those are usually high-level languages. It's not too hard to make sense of these uh, high-level languages, and they're closer to human languages compared to the lower level languages. All right, lower level languages. So what are low level languages now? Low level languages are languages closer to the uh, hardware level, meaning languages that are easier for hardware to understand. One type of uh, a low level language is called assembly language, which, which has a one-to-one -one correlation with uh, machine code instructions. Um, they use uh, mnemonic codes to represent machine code instructions. So machine code instructions are the uh, instructions that your CPU can understand. So here, uh, machine code is the uh, lowest language and is understood by the CPU. So it's written in uh, 0, 01 bits. So all you see is pretty much 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01. And depending on the length and depending on the order of the zeros and ones, that's actually an instruction that is understood by the CPU. And the CPU, what it does, it, it carries out these instructions that are written in the 0, 01 bits, known as uh, machine code. So basically, uh, just to reiterate, compilers convert high-level languages into lower-level languages. High-level languages are the Python, uh, the C++, the ones that we're familiar with to write software. The low-level languages are languages that the hardware or the uh, CPU can understand. What's happening behind the uh, hood is the high-level languages are compiled into low-level languages that your CPU can or hardware can understand. So let's talk about what Python is and uh, what type of language Python is. Okay, so uh, Python is uh, called an interpreter language as opposed to C++, which is called uh, a compiled language. Now, all of these uh, labels are sort of a misconception. It's a misconception that a language is either compiled or interpreted because there's actually many implementations of a, of a language. Many implementations, meaning there's different sort of versions. Um, you have C Python, you have PyPy, you have Jython or Jython, not sure, Jython, Iron Python. And all of these are written in uh, different source code. So C Python is actually written in C. Uh, PyPy, I think, is also written in C. Uh, Jython is written in Java. So all of these are different implementations of Python written in different codes, and some of them are compiled uh, versions. Some of them um, compile, I think, to straight to machine code. Some of them use uh, virtual machines. So there's all of these sort of different versions of um, Python. And the standard version is called uh, CPython. So CPython is, when, when we refer to Python, what we usually refer to is uh, CPython. Um, C Python is what most of us get when we download from the official site. And when most people are referring to uh, Python as an interpreter language, they're actually referring to uh, C Python, implementation C Python. But you always want to remember that um, when you say Python is an interpreter language, you want to specify which um, implementation. So it's the same case with the C++. There's actually uh, there's C++ that use interpreters, and but uh, the most popular versions of C++ are uh, uh, the ones that compile straight to uh, machine code. All right, so let's just go down. All right, so an another misconception is um, calling certain languages compiled and calling certain, certain languages as uh, interpreted languages because um, Python also compiles its language. I think all languages pretty much have a, uh, a compiling phase. So I'm um, saying Python is not a, a compiled language. It's also uh, confusing because um, Python actually does have a compiling phase and, and uses an interpreter. So that's what I, I, I want to briefly go over. Um, I want to go over exactly what the uh, C Python compiler does. Remember, in this video, whenever I refer to Python, I'll be referring to C Python. So I actually want to go over the uh, misconception that uh, Python is not a, a compiled language. 
and go over what exactly is happening in the uh, compiling phase as well as um, the Python interpreter and virtual machine does. So a vast majority of, uh, I guess, the most popular implementations of C++ compiles its code directly into a form of uh, machine code or a code that the machine can directly understand. So C++ will uh, compile its code into something that the machine can directly understand. Now, this is a, a little different from what uh, CPython uh, compiles into. So, so CPython converts its code into an intermediary version called bytecode. Um, so Python does not convert its code into a machine code or uh, something that hardware can understand. It actually con uh, converts it into something called bytecode. So within Python, there's also a uh, compiling going on, but it's just not into a uh, machine language. It's into bytecode. And this bytecode cannot be understood by CPU. So we need actually an interpreter called the uh, Python Virtual Machine. Python Virtual Machine. So we need an interpreter called the Python Virtual Machine to interpret it for us. Now the Python Virtual Machine is a little confusing. It took me a little while to grasp everything, but it's actually, uh, Python Virtual Machine is actually code written in C. And it's actually emulating a machine. So this machine, um, this virtual machine can execute Python bytecodes. Remember, we're compiling the Python source code. The script that we wrote is the Python source code. We convert that into Python bytecodes. And this virtual machine that gets started when we uh, run a Python file executes the uh, bytecode the same way a CPU will execute machine instructions. So this is very important. The Python virtual machine is going to execute the bytecodes the same way a CPU uh, executes uh, the machine instructions. Uh, one of the confusing things that actually took me a little while to figure out was um, how exactly the Python virtual machine is executing everything. I mean, I thought everything had to be converted to machine language or machine code to be, um, to be understood by the CPU. So we do actually have um, some code being turned into machine code, uh, some sort of a compilation phase that requires um, code being turned into machine code, but it's not the bytecode. The bytecode does not need to be turned into machine code. The bytecode can be uh, ran by the uh, Python virtual machine. What actually does get turned into a machine language or machine code is the source code for the virtual Python virtual machine. Remember, the Python virtual machine is written in C, and that's what uh, gets compiled to machine language uh, when we first when we run Python. When you first run python.exe, um, the source code for this virtual machine or interpreter gets compiled or turned into a machine language, and then it gets executed by this, by our CPU. So once it gets executed by our CPU, um, we now have this sort of virtual machine. We have a virtual CPU, a, a virtual machine that can execute a Python bytecodes in the same way a real CPU can execute machine instructions. So, this whole idea of virtual CPUs and virtual machines um, may seem confusing, but I have an example that may help you get a better idea or better understanding of how we actually create these virtual machines. If you guys are familiar with uh, video game emulators, they're the same thing. They're just virtual versions um, of the hardware. You know, the hardware has a CPU, hard drive, and RAM and everything, so we can actually create virtual versions of that onto our computer. And that's the same way we're sort of creating a virtual version of a CPU of a machine that can run Python bytecode. So you can actually have a CPU hardware. So you can actually or create CPU hardware that will run bytecode. So remember, for, to run bytecode, we're actually creating a virtual CPU. Um, but we can actually, if you're an engineer, you can actually create a CPU that will understand bytecode the same way a, a CPU understands uh, machine uh, instructions and things like that. But um, I'm not an expert in this field, so pretty sure that it's not worth the, the cost. Re I'm sure it's really difficult to actually implement. So I guess uh, that's it for Python compilers, bytecode, and virtual machines. So remember, compilers take a language and convert it into a lower level language. So a high level language gets converted into a low level language. And Python actually has a, a, a compiling phase or a compilation phase, but it, it compiles into bytecodes which um, needs a sort of virtual machine to run the code for us. And this virtual machine is actually a software or, or a virtual CPU that when you first run the, uh, 
the source code for the virtual machine gets compiled to machine languages, which um, uh, gets read by the CPU and then um, and executed, run, run by the CPU and executed. And then we have this virtual machine, which is capable of running Python instruction the same way um, a real CPU is running machine instructions. All right, so hopefully uh, that was useful for you guys. It took me actually a few days of research. So hopefully this is beneficial for you guys as well. And yeah, uh, just give me some comments um, as to what you like or if there are any mistakes, let me know if I made any mistakes. All right, so that's it for this video. I will see you guys next time.